What's up guys, H Masters here today doing a review of Lego Star Wars buildable figure Darth Vader. This is item number 7511 with 160 pieces. So on the back we just kind of have a bunch of random pictures, all the other sets. And I am pretty excited to build this because this looks like one of the better figures we've gotten in a while. Alright, so here is Darth Vader and his overall stance, and the first thing I'm going to point out is that he does have a little bit of a different build in the torso. It is completely all Technic, and as you guys can see in the instructions, you can just kind of see how it is. So it is actually a pretty interesting build, it is completely different from pretty much all of the other Star Wars sets, except for General Grievous, in terms of having a little bit of Technic in there. You know, that, that's just a nice feature and overall happy with that. Alright, so taking a look at the head on this guy, the head is very good, which personally I think that's very important because when you're trying to replicate a figure and kind of trying to bring it to life as your own little thing, you don't really want to mess up one of the most like important and iconic things of a character like Darth Vader. So the fact that they got this head right is very good. The head came out very nice. You have a whole lot of articulation. It has a little bit of trouble looking up and down, but not too much. You can move side to side very easily. Overall, it's just a very nice head. The head is all one piece, by the way. You're not going to like lift it up, and you're not going to find that there's just like a Katorian head or something down there. It is all one piece. So one thing very good about Darth Vader is his articulation. You would think, you know, at least maybe even in the arms, he would have a little bit of difficulty with posing because he does use these pieces and you know these pieces they generally they cause a little bit of um troubles in terms of posing and there is only a certain amount but you can stick his arm out all the way there so if you want to pose where he has his arm sticking out like this you know move his head and he just kind of has his lights here out kind of like that you know you can do that so there is a, there is a certain amount of articulation you get here so we can't move much higher than this otherwise this piece will end up popping off so it is pretty good though you have a good amount of articulation for you know using this piece and overall very good another thing is that even with the arms you, you can move this like all the way around and this the way the torso is designed is that there are just two ball joints here both of these are connected in the same area with two ball joints so you can move this around to move it with which is pretty good i like that because it just kind of adds a more sort of realistic look over here when you're trying to pose him it's very good for getting a little bit of um, more complicated poses. And you know, that's just a nice feature. It's something I didn't really see coming when I built him. I wasn't expecting it. I was just kind of seeing, like thinking, oh yeah, he can be able to move his arms up. Not thinking, oh, this can move too. Oh wow, that's cool. Which is it's pretty interesting. And I'm very happy they included that with the set. So one thing they've been doing pretty much across the entire Star Wars line is that they've been covering up the lower um, the lower legs here with this piece and hold screw on Darth Vader here and that's actually very nice you know the way it just comes out if I just move his cape to the side you can see it covers it up it gives it an overall nicer look it actually fits very well with this brand new armor piece that we get too and overall very happy they did that it wasn't something they needed to do it wasn't something they had to do especially on Darth Vader considering he has this cape which also is a very cool addition to the set. But you know, considering he had his cape, the cape, you know, they could just be lazy, be like, okay, well, this covers it up so we don't have to do anything. And speaking of that, even on the back here, for the custom torso, they have like these panels here, all sorts of good stuff. The only thing really bad about this is that there is no random red pieces kind of just sticking out there. But other than that, it's very consistent in the color scheme back here too even without the cape to cover it up. Which, again, another one of those very nice things that you didn't really see coming. You wouldn't expect it because you would think, oh, he has the cape, so they wouldn't try to cover that up. But nope, they actually did, which is pretty nice of them. Now, there are some things that people aren't really going to like, such as, if you can see, there is a little bit of gappiness on the torso there. It's nothing too deal-breaking. The cape it covers that up a little bit. But you know, it's there, some people aren't going to like it. Other things people aren't going to like again with the torso, some people are liking this. Um, I'm, I'm fine with it, it's just a cool little detail. 
Alright, so one thing that really bothers me about this set is that I feel like they just made him unnecessarily tall. He feels like it's tall to be tall, and to put this in perspective, I have Darth Vader here, and I have Witch Doctor from Hero Factory, which is probably the biggest construction set of all time, at least using the current CCBS system. And to put that in perspective, you can just kind of see his size comparison, where Witch Doctor is noticeably taller, but you can still see Vader, he, he, he stands his own ground, he's still pretty big. He's definitely one of the biggest construction sets to be made. And I don't, I don't think it needs to be that way. He just looks to me like it's, he has over, overly big legs, just kind of to be big, to kind of exemplify the fact that he is, you know, the big villain here. But, you know, I, I just, it kind of makes him look a little bit awkward to me. But overall, it doesn't really matter. It's still, it's still fine. But I just kind of wish he was a little bit shorter. So taking a look at his lightsaber, as you can see, it's pretty much red. The lightsaber is a little bit different. They do use a different plastic on these than they do for just the regular kind of armor pieces. This one is translucent, so you can see through it a little bit, not quite. You might be able to see my hand through there. Probably not, but maybe. It is a little bit flexible, which is good because, you know, then it won't break as easy. So if you're having like a Star Wars battle with someone, and you're just kind of battling your figures, then you don't really have to worry about it breaking. And one last feature of the set is that, as an extra piece, they actually include this. And in the instructions, it tells you that you can put this piece on his hand over here. And then you can connect his lightsaber, so he's holding it, you know, just all one-handed. Which, again, one of those just cool features that they didn't have to do. They didn't, you didn't, need, they didn't need to include an extra piece, so you could get a little bit of more sort of dynamic posing with him. And you know, it's overall nice. I like the idea that he can hold it with um, two hands if you really want him to. It's just one of those nice things for posability. And overall, it's just very nice. It isn't something they need to do, but it is something they did do. And that's just one of the cooler things. It's a pretty solid set. I think it does represent Darth Vader very well. It, it gets the accomplishment, you know. At the end of the day, what they're trying to do with the set, they're trying to make a fun set. Like, you know, kids can play with, but the set's also trying to represent Dar Darth Vader. And that's one thing this set definitely accomplishes. It accomplishes um, that with ease. There isn't really, th there isn't anything too far off in terms of representing him. Like, the only thing, really, is that he does have, like, two capes in the actual one. There's a cape down here, but then he just has one giant cape, so that doesn't even matter. And overall, as a set, this is a very solid set. It's a, it's a good set for kids, you know, that kids just want to go around and play with it, and it's a good set for collectors. The only thing that is a little bit of an issue to me is that this set is $30, which is very expensive. However, I do understand, you know, considering they have to pay license, licensing fees, and because of stuff like that, you know, they have to up the price so they can sort of get a, at least some profit, which, you know, I can kind of see why they up the price there. But I do think it is a little bit expensive. So I would not say to just, you know, go out and grab the set right away. Like, if you can get the set on a discount, then I definitely recommend it. But for $30, it is a little bit expensive. It is, it's still a good set to buy, but unless, it, like, if you have $30 to buy something else, I don't think I'd recommend this. I'd say, you know, wait for this to be on sale unless you, you absolutely really want this set then yeah so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed until next time i'll see you guys later